Well, good morning, CBNAS families. It's so great to have everybody here. How incredible it is to be together with the body of Christ again. God bless you for coming. I know you have a choice. We're glad that you chose to be with other believers to encourage and strengthen and support throughout this process. Why don't we stand and let's bow together and pray as uh, we enter into worship. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this beautiful day. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and we were going to be glad in it. Father, we choose to do so today. We pray that you would bless all that are here. And now, Father, this is your time. By the presence of your Holy Spirit, come. Come into our hearts. Soften them. Get them ready to receive the word that you have for each and every one of us. Help us to express kindness and grace and mercy to everyone around us. This is your time. In the name of Jesus, take it and use it as you wish. We pray these things in faith. Amen. Let's worship together. Nothing compared to your end. 
of scripture that talks about who Jesus is. In fact, Jesus even repeats this in the Gospels. From Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, listen to these words again. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. How incredible these words are. Take them to heart today and let the Lord speak to you through them. Let's continue to worship. i 
you bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer? Father, it is so amazing to be able to come to you with confidence with, for your grace and your mercy and your love. And so we do. We dive into your presence right now and ask that you would do a mighty work inside of each one of us. We bring to you our lives. We lay them before you and ask that you would do a mighty work in us. Forgive us of those areas that have fallen short of your glory. Cleanse us. We bring to you those things that did not please you and ask that you would change us into the very image of your son, Jesus. And then fill us, Father, with your Holy Spirit that we might be empowered to live for you and to work for you, to serve you by serving our fellow man. We ask that in these moments you would give us that opportunity. We lay down at your feet those things that most concern us. Jesus, help us. And our bodies bring healing to the sick. Guidance to those who need wisdom. Strength to those who feel weak, both in faith and in resolve. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would also empower us for service. Grant us exactly what we need through your Holy Spirit. We pray that in this time we will be able, through your Holy Spirit, to have what we need to accomplish the work you've called us to, to do. We pray, Father, that you would also bring healing to our country, to our society. We pray, Father, that we would see truth, not the way the world defines it, but the way you define it. I pray against the spirit of this age, in the name of Jesus, that it would not overtake your spirit and the guidance that you would give us in truth. Let all men and women see it as you reveal it to them. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be sensitive in that area. Allow us, almighty God, to be able to know truth and allow the truth to set us free. We give everything else into your hands, Father. We just pray that you would do what you will do. We trust you. We love you. We know that what you have for us is the best. We know that in all things you work together for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Do that good in us. Then let us do good to others. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said together, amen. Amen. Well, a couple of announcements before we get into the word. And first and foremost, this is Celebration Sunday. We want you to take the time today to encourage each other uh, and to, to strengthen each other and resolve and fellowship and in, encouraging each other in the faith as well. This is the day that we really set aside for that opportunity, so I hope that you will take that opportunity. I do want to take the time to say thank you uh, to all of you who, who were so helpful in putting together last Sunday evening's Back to Church celebration. It was incredible. Everybody just needs to know how incredible it was. Now, I have to be honest with you. I have to confess that um, I and somebody else, a friend of mine that's here today, and I won't mention any names, but uh, we, we kind of thought, well, we might have... 60, 65, maybe even 70, I thought, maybe 70 people at the barbecue, or the jump house, all the things that we did last Sunday evening. Folks, I want you to know I was blown away. We had almost 130 here. There was a miracle that happened that we had enough food, but beyond that, just the, the energy and the, the life that was in this place last Sunday night was incredible. So I want to thank all of you for being a part of that. Those of you who worked so hard to make, uh, make sure we had everything we needed and to get it all set up. And for all of that you came, uh, I want you to know I was so blessed to have you here. Now, we did have some technical difficulties. If you're watching this today and you tried to watch our gospel night uh, last Sunday evening, we had some de technical difficulties, and uh, we're going to resolve those before the end of this month, and that is on the 25th of uh, July. But uh, we couldn't quite get the streaming to work, and uh, unfortunately, um, as many of you know, a lot of our equipment was stolen from the church just a few weeks ago, so we were having to get new equipment and we're still trying to patch everything together. But within the next couple of days, we should have everything we need. And by the end of July, we will go live with our uh, hymn sing-along. And I think it will be much, much better. Okay. I also want to encourage you, uh, as you can, if God has blessed you, please consider supporting the, the work of this church, not only here but around the world, in giving. And you can do that by sending it to the church, dropping it into the offering box, or being a part of it through Venmo at CV Naz Give, and I know that uh, God will bless you as you bless others. All right, go ahead and grab your Bibles, if you will, and let's take a look at the Gospel according to John, chapter 8. 
Um, please stand as you find that, and, and we will look at the Word of God together. John chapter 8, beginning with verse number 31. This is what the Word of the Lord says to us today. Now, Jesus is having a conversation with some Jewish believers. These, these are people who came to know him. These are people who uh, were following him as a disciple. And he says this, To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. And the truth, say it with me, will set you free. They answered, well, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a song, a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Let's pray together. Father, now take this. Let your words speak so profoundly. And let us hear it and let us apply it to our lives. And I need your help this morning, Lord. I need your help. I pray in the name of Jesus that a miracle would happen from your heart to our ears and to our hearts. Let us respond. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you so much. Well, it is the 4th of July today. Happy 4th of July. I hope you have some great plans today, maybe some barbecue or uh, some fireworks a little bit later, although in Alameda County, fireworks are prohibited. Um, anyway, um, what, what you do today, I hope that you will have a lot of fun. Be together with family and friends. Do something that would really just make you smile. And in the midst of it, be thankful. Okay, I, just, I have to say this. Be thankful for the freedoms we do have. I know some of you are concerned about the direction of this world, perhaps even the direction of our country, the United States. Perhaps you're a little afraid that our freedoms are going to be taken away from me. I hear that, and I, and I see that um, online often. I want you to know, and I, I, I need you to say, that true freedom does not come from our country, nor our president, nor any, any other entity other than God himself. That is where our freedom comes. Now, I want you to know a couple of things that are really, really important. First and foremost, you need to understand that, that God created us to experience freedom. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 tells us that we were called to freedom. That is our calling. God calls us to freedom. He desires it. He plans it. He's put it in the process. He is calling us into an experience of freedom. Not in the sense that we can do whatever we want, but in the sense that we are in line with God's creative purpose in us, both physically, emotionally, spiritually, even relationally. God has called us to freedom. And so with this, we need to understand that is our calling. It is our birthright as believers. It is something that is expected of us that we are to experience freedom consistently, yes, every single day of our lives. And we do so through God. A.W. Tozer writes these words, listen to this. In almost everything that touches our everyday life on earth, God is pleased when we are pleased. He wills that we will be free as birds to soar and sing our maker's praise without anxiety. Now what does that all mean? We are called to freedom and that we, we are purposed by God's creation to be free. What does it truly mean to be free? I want to talk about that today. Oswald Chambers wrote it this way. Listen. I have to get to the point of the absolute and unquestionable relationship that takes everything exactly as it comes from Him, that is God. God never guides us at some time in the future, but always here and now. So realize that the Lord is here now, and the freedom you receive is, is immediate. Oswald Chambers and many other people point out the fact that freedom doesn't come from our country. It doesn't come from anything outside of us. It is the expression or the feeling or the, the experience of something that happens within us. It is something that happens within us through the presence of Christ in our lives. And what that means to me and what that means to all of us today as we look at the scripture is that God has a pattern. God has a pathway. It was created in us. We are called to it and to live it means that we will experience freedom. But he has a pattern. He has a process. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And he has a, a, 
a groove that we must live in to experience that. How many of you remember the old 16 millimeter uh, projectors back in, I don't know when it was, the 60s and the 70s? I used to get really, we used to get really excited when we would walk into school in one of the classrooms and we'd see one of those uh, set up in the back of the room because we knew we were going to have to listen to the teacher today. We'd get to watch a movie. It was exciting. And some of you, all of you that grew up in DVDs and other things, you don't really, really realize. I actually have a picture. I want to show you, this is what they look like. And some of you remember those, right? Well, back in the day in youth ministry, we used to rent uh, Christian movies from a Christian mo- movie rental place. Uh, the 16 millimeter that is film, we didn't have VHSs or DVDs, so we'd get the film reel. And one particular evening, we were watching a movie called Super Christian. We had rented it um, and brought it in, got the youth group all together, and we were sitting in there, and I was a little bit busy, so I asked one of my associates, one of my uh, sponsors, if they would go set up the, the projector, and so they went over and did it. Um, I, I got busy and, and, and wasn't really watching, but um, we, we got the youth group started, got everybody settled, and started the movie. Just a little turn of the switch on one of these projectors. And it starts going. And, and we're going and we're watching. The, the light came on in the projector and we're kind of watching it. And, and something just didn't seem right. The, 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 the picture on the screen was all jumbled and was shaking. And, and then I looked over at the projector and film was flowing out of the side of the projector. It was in and, and, and little uh, kind of like tiles. You know, they were, they were being squeezed together and folded. And I, I thought, well, wait a minute here, there's something wrong, this is, something's not right, let's shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. And so someone ran over there and turned the projector off. And as I walked over, it was very clear to me that the projector had been set up incorrectly. Now, if you know these projectors, you know there's a pathway that needs to be followed. Um, it has to wind from the main reel in the front down through this little entrance and then around this little wheel and then around another wheel and then it comes up and through, goes past where the bulb is and then up and around and there's a, a, a little loop that has to remain it's, it's kind of a strange thing uh, it's it's loose there's no wheels there's no guides or anything you just have to make sure that this loop is exactly right and then it comes down through the projector goes down through it again down through the bottom it's going past the sound mechanisms where it gets the sound off of the uh, off of the film and then down the bottom up through another couple of tension um, um, spindles, and then up to the reel in the back where it is constantly being wound back there. And then at the end, you just loosen them up and they go, well, he didn't do it right. And because it wasn't aligned right, because it wasn't in the prescribed pathway, disaster happened. Uh, I don't remember whether we had to pay for that film, but I can tell you one thing. It was pretty messed up, at least in the first few seconds of, of the story. Uh, there is a prescribed way you're supposed to do that. A prescribed way where the film is supposed to travel. And around, through, and all these things has to be exactly right. And when everything is in the right place, when it, everything is, is lined up the way it's supposed to, then everything works correctly. When it is out of line, it is absolute disaster. Well, this is exactly what the story that Jesus is trying to get to his followers. The biblical context here is this. That Jesus is speaking to a group of believers these are Jewish believers, rare at that time and early. They, they were following him. They had, they had put their faith in him. And they were dealing with a problem of trying to figure out how to be these early Christians. And Jesus knew they were chosen people. They saw themselves as favored because they were Jews. They, they guided their history back to Abraham and all the great patriarchs. But in the context, in this context, the Jews had experienced decades of captivity and even at the present time, they were in captivity to Rome at some level. And Jesus comes and begins to, to address this. And he responds to them. He says, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to understand about this scripture and how important it is. Jesus equates true freedom with three very important principles. Number one, first and foremost, freedom comes from truth. The truth, Jesus says, will set you free. Freedom, everybody, you need to understand this, does not come from our government. It does not come from any outside circumstance. Freedom comes from the truth. It is the truth that guides and aligns the pathway of God's desire and his purpose. You might ask, what is truth? 
Well, truth is just not a set of words, okay, that, that, that is speaking. Uh, they're, they're not this idea, but this principle of God-created purpose. God has created the world with certain unalienable absolutes. Someone please say amen about that. God created this world with absolutes. There are absolutes. And I know in this culture today, everybody wants to put away and say, no, they're not absolutes. Whatever's right for me is, is right for me and it may be not right for you. But he created this world to work in a certain way, in a certain pace. There is a balance. There is a pattern. And when all of these things are followed, then there is peace in nature. When all of these things that God created in nature are followed, there is peace in nature. And when all these things that are created in us are followed, there is peace in us. And this is true, so true, because God created us with undeniable absolutes in our bodies. God created us with undeniable absolutes in our minds and in our spirits to live in a certain place, in a certain space, in a certain pace. There's a balance. There's a pa pattern that when followed, we experience freedom. And that only comes through living out truth. The truth will set us free. And that truth is God's pattern. That truth is God's purpose. It is his plan. It is his will. That is the truth. And living outside of that brings absolute chaos. Don't tell me you don't see it in people's lives all over the place. When they're living their own thing, when they're getting in trouble, when they're doing things that they ought not to do against God's purpose and plan, there is chaos in their life. And that chaos expresses itself. I want you to remember, Ephesians tells us, we were created for freedom. Don't miss it. God created us for freedom. And in that freedom, God has a plan and a purpose for our life. Secondly, we need to understand that knowledge of truth sets the foundations for freedom. The knowledge of truth sets the foundations for freedom. Knowing this pattern, knowing what God has done, knowing God's desire, knowing his purpose and his plan and his will, and living in those things are what create the foundations for freedom. God's pattern was made for us so that we can be free. So often people think about the church or you know, about religion as rules of do not, do not, do not, do not. God did not create any do not rules. I know that we look at the Ten Commandments that way. I know that we see can, can, Ten Commandments as ten do not do's. But I want you to know the commandments are love letters, expressions of what we can do that brings freedom to our lives. And I hope that you will look at that in that particular way. But knowing the pattern will get us in the right groove, and we will essentially experience freedom there. I had a, some friends of mine just out of college. We decided to go backpacking up in the minarets in the Sierras in, in California. And so we had our plans, absolutely, all mapped out, maps, everything, backpacks on. Uh, first couple of days were beautiful, uh, making a race through some beautiful country. Going to the Devil's Post Pile, that was a lot of fun. I've never seen anything like that in my life. But we, on day three, we were going to uh, a, a particular lake, and we were walking up through the minarets and, uh, and hiking up through there. And I, I looked down, and I saw out in the valley the lakes that we were looking for. And we all just kind of sat around, took a little lunch break there and looked at it and, and determined that, you know what, if we take the trail that is on the map, it's going to take us an extra hour. So we determined right then and there we were going we were to go a different way. We saw a little cut of a little cutout. And, and as we began to take, in, yeah, I know where you're going on this. Um, hang on, story. the story ends up pretty good. Okay, anyway, it, we, we take this little cutout and we begin to, to work our way down a very steep hill. In fact, it got so steep that uh, with, with us all together, we had to help each other to climb down of a, uh, down of sometime. Well, there was a dangerous path. One of my partners, one of my friends, ended up scraping his knee really bad. Another one twisted his ankle. And certainly our hands were just beat up by holding on to things, trying to get down this hill. That was not the prescribed path. If we would have followed the map, we would have got there without any scrapes, cuts, or bruises. But we chose a different path, and because of that, it was, a, it was chaotic, and it was dangerous, and we suffered because of that. Knowing the truth sets the foundations for our freedom. you got to know the truth, because the truth will set us free. And so we have to be absolutely committed to discovering the depths of who God is 
and how he has created this world. And, folks, listen to me, how he's created us. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, God has set a purpose and a plan as to how you ought to do it. Guess what? If you follow it, it's going to be blessed. You will feel freedom. You will be able to be free to express yourself in ways that God intended. Don't get off of the map. Don't get off of the trail. Knowing the truth sets the foundations for freedom. Number three, knowledge of the truth comes from holding on to Jesus' teachings. Jesus says that very clearly. He relates freedom to holding on to my teaching. If you will hold on, if you will embrace, if you will hold to my teaching, then you will know the truth. Now, catch this. Uh, By holding to his teachings, you become a disciple of Jesus Christ, and by becoming a disciple, following after the patterns and purpose and pleasing Jesus, you will know the truth. By following Jesus, by getting to know Jesus, by, by, by doing all that he has commanded us to do, by being obedient, we will know the truth. That's the only way that we're going to know the truth. Because by following him, we discover what is right, what is real, what is best. And by knowing the truth, Jesus says, the truth will set you free. I want you to know this word here. When Jesus says, hold to my teachings, it means to abide. It means to embrace it. It means to saturate yourself with the teachings of Jesus. I heard this last week of, um, of a, a study that was done among evangelical Christians. The question was asked by George Barna of evangelical, those, those who believe in Christ, who believe it's important to tell others about him. He asked, how many of you continually read your Bible um, on a daily basis? And out of all of the yes, only 11% say they read the Bible on any continual basis. Oh, no wonder, guys, I want to say this from all my heart, no wonder the church is in trouble. If only 11% are following the teachings of Jesus, are, are saturating themselves with the teachings of Jesus, then they have no knowledge of truth. And if you have no knowledge of truth, there's no foundation by which that knowledge is based, then the church is going to go askew. It's going to begin teaching things that are popular. It's going to begin to, to, to do things that are popular in our society rather than standing on the truth of God's word. What is Jesus teaching here? Everything that Jesus teaches reveals the will of God and his glory. He teaches the purpose of God. He reveals God's plan. He reveals his will. And and holding on to and embracing these teachings saturate ourselves with truth. And with truth comes. We have a foundation by which we can follow God's pattern. We can follow God's purpose. We can be in his groove. That created pathway that brings real, true, and glorious freedom. That 11% that consistently would not read the Bible are those who would follow other teachings. Now watch this. This is really important. Very practical, in essence. The Jews responded to Jesus' words in this way. We are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? What are the Jews saying? We're Jews. Um, You know, we're, we're God's favored people. Uh, we've never been slaves to anybody. Now, here's the problem with that. You know the history of, of Israel. You know that how untrue that is. But it would be almost like saying, uh, understand this. We are Americans. We're free. Are we really? Are we really? Truly, the absurd side of this argument that they gave to Jesus ignores both Israel's history and their present current situation. Uh, throughout their history, Israel was often subjugated to other nations. In fact, the entire book of Judges tells about the nation's cycles of sin, oppression, rescue, restoration. And at one point, the vast majority of the Jewish people were carried off into captivity. You find that in Daniel chapter 1 and then again in Esther chapter 2. And most obviously, the nation of Israel, um, as most of you know the stories, was enslaved in Egypt. Throughout that, at this present day, Israel was under the absolute control of the Roman Empire, so it's mind-boggling that could say we've never been slaves to anyone. 
I think what they were saying is, because we're Jews, we have freedom. It's almost like saying, because we are Americans, we have freedom. Do we really? Do we really? Is that true freedom? Is that true and glorious freedom? No. Because people can experience true and glorious freedom in China, and they do, where communism is a ruler. People experience this in Muslim countries where only 1% of the country is Christian. People experience this in incarceration, even in solitary confinement. You can experience true and glorious freedom no matter where you are, and you don't have to be an American. There are people who are Americans that are no, not free at all. They are so confined by their choices and what happens in their lives with drugs and alcohol and things such as that. Listen to Jesus' words again. Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. What is sin? Sin is living out a pattern different than God's desire in our life. Sin is missing the mark designed by God. Sin is living out of the pathway that God has created us to live in where everything works like it is supposed to. God's desire is to live out into His pattern, His will, His purpose, His desire, His groove. Sin is missing that pathway, missing that mark. And that's where chaos comes from. That's where captivity comes from and, a, and oppression. You want true freedom? Find out about his pattern and live it out. You want true freedom? Find out about his will and live it out. Do you want true purpose and desire? Do you want to live into the groove of God? Then find out what it is that he's doing and live that out. There are some practical examples of this that I want to give you today. Very practical application. First, and foremost, we are called to freedom. Everybody needs to understand that. We were called to freedom. We need to realize, as Oswald Chambers says, we need to realize that the Lord is here now and that true freedom is something that we can receive right now immediately by following Him. Secondly, true freedom comes from knowing the truth. That is, understanding, knowing God's pattern, knowing God's purpose, knowing what God's groove is, His will, His plan. His pathway. Number three, we need to know that truth comes from knowing the teachings of Jesus. We need to saturate ourselves with His revealed truth through His Word, through His teachings, through His modeling of His life, and understanding that Jesus modeled the pathway to true freedom. And number four, knowing the teachings of Jesus sets the patterns of God's design, His will, His purpose, His plan, and His desire. Your life will then be threaded through the projector of God's purpose, and, and there everything will work exactly like God has created it to work, His greatest desire in us. Now here's the problem. I think you know this. The world's idea of freedom is to do whatever we feel like doing. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, I guess they would qualify it by saying that. But to de determine truth for ourselves, the way it fits ourselves, to follow a pattern that seems right to me, whatever feels right. And nobody else has the opportunity or nobody else has the right to tell me what is right for me. I have no boundaries, no limitations, perhaps even no rules. Well, can I ask a very poignant question today? How's that working out for you? Can anybody tell me that this type of philosophy is actually making the world a better place? I see more dysfunction now than I have ever seen. I mean, downright chaotic dysfunction than I've ever seen in my life. Now, here's the thing. Proverbs tells us there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death or destruction. That's not freedom. Freedom is not me saying, I know what is right for me, because it is in conflict with my creation and my calling it is in conflict with God's desire in my life, the way he wants it to be. But when I find that way that is following the prescribed pathway of God's creation and calling in my life, then I will experience freedom. The, the message here is very simple. Freedom cannot be found outside 
of God in our lives. Oh, there will be times that you may feel free, but it's not given by a government. It is not given by a society. It is not given by anything. True and glorious freedom comes from God himself through Jesus and his words and being his disciples. And if we want to experience freedom that no one else, not even the government, can take away, then you need to saturate yourselves with the words of Jesus. Jesus says, if you hold to my teachings, you will be my disciples. Then, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Would you bow your heads with me for a moment? Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you have given to us. Help us to understand this. And no matter where we find ourselves today or in the years ahead, Help us to know that freedom can never be taken away from us because it is given by you. Help us to understand the principles that Jesus laid out here. Let us saturate ourselves with his words. Let us be his disciple and follow him and his pattern and his pathway. And then, Father, let us, let us experience freedom. Let us experience freedom. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Let's worship. God bless you all. Thank you. I hope you have a great 4th of July. So incredible an opportunity to just have a really, really good day. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you, and may he grant you peace. God bless you all. See you soon.